Good morning. Welcome to MCC Toronto. And for those of you who are watching on the World Wide Web, either streaming at the 11 o'clock service or perhaps watching an archived service sometime later, welcome to you as well. Today is a historic day in the life of MCC Toronto. In fact, it's a historic day in the life of MCC because today we plant our first multi-site location. A remote location where people are meeting in a theater in the Muskoka area in Bracebridge, Ontario to watch this service, to participate in it by being there with each other, singing the hymns, hearing the readings, hearing this message, having their own communion together. Today is a very historic day. So no matter where you're watching from or when you're watching, welcome. You're all welcome at this service. Before we get started, I'd like to say just a word about this new ministry and how it's developed. First, I'd like to thank the pastor of MCC Toronto, the Reverend Dr. Brent Hawks, and the board who have been supportive of this ministry from its inception. We are two years from the first conversations that we had about this ministry, and today, those conversations are bearing fruit. One of the big reasons they're bearing fruit today is because of Jane Craig. She has faithfully moved this process forward for this multi-site location. She has shepherded this process. She has been a leader in this process. And I want to personally thank her for her energy and her commitment and her call to do this ministry in the Muskoka region. I'd like to thank Mark Warren, who has worked really tirelessly to help us work out all the technical glitches and make this work. Mark is a gifted human being, and he shares his gifts in his ministry at MCC Toronto, and I give thanks for him. And I'd also like to say a thank you to Dina Dudley, who has stepped into this ministry, stepped in and really provided leadership, gone to Muskoka, come back from Muskoka, been on conference calls, countless emails. She has really, really put a lot of time and energy into this. So, here we are. We're in a new day. And we've heard sacred readings this morning, just like we always hear. But I want to call your attention to the reading that we had this morning from Colossians. The reading from Colossians is the beginning of a letter from Paul to people in faraway places. And the beginning of this letter indicates that this letter is to be read in one place and then another place and then the content shared with yet another place. Questions are asked about how folks are doing and how they're progressing. In Paul's day, to be able to write down what he wanted to say, have that letter transported on someone's person and end up somewhere else where someone else who had the ability to read could actually read it to a congregation was just about as miraculous as what we're doing today. Paul duplicated his efforts. Paul reached out. He used the letters to reach people that he might not otherwise be able to reach and encourage. He used his letters and he used the people behind the scenes who carried those letters and read those letters faithfully. He used them to spread the good news, the gospel, that God loves us all. What we're doing today is not so dissimilar to Paul's letters. We're taking the message out to faraway places. We're sharing it with people that we don't even aren't even able to see here today. But they're able to be with each other. They're able to meet together uh, and share the good news between them. Now, our second reading this morning talks about something very, very important. And while I tend to get all tied up in the technology and the, just the magnificence of the fact that we can do all this, I get very excited about it. It's very important for me not to forget why we're doing it. And there's a great big why in the second reading. In the second reading, Jesus points out that we can do 
everything that Jesus did and more. We can do everything and more. And so what is it that we're supposed to be about? What is the good news? I ask a lot of people this. I very often don't get a satisfactory answer. What is the gospel message? What is the good news? Well, it's really pretty simple in my book. You know, people have told me that most ministers only have one sermon to give, and I'm certainly in that category. I used to worry a lot about that. I used to worry that I wouldn't be able to come up with the, the big theological treaties, or I wouldn't be able to make the fancy intellectual turn, that I wouldn't be able to entertain, that my delivery wouldn't be great. And then one day I realized I only have one sermon in me, and here it is. God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. And I believe that that is the essence of the gospel message. That is the essence of the good news. The good news is God loves us, loves every one of us, loves us unconditionally, loves us passionately, will not let go of us, will not walk away from us, no matter what we do. MCC Toronto has a very special ministry, a very special place in the culture within which it resides. MCC Toronto has been in the business of teaching people the gospel message that God loves us. And that message is so powerful that it motivates us to get up and go to work on the social justice issues that need to be addressed. I read a quote this week by uh, my good friend, Reverend Robert Griffin. It's on the bottom of his email. And I'm not sure where it comes from, but it says, prayer changes people. People change things. So this is the bottom line of what I want to say this morning. There are some of us who are vitally involved daily with this ministry. We work on it. Some of us eat and sleep it. Some of us think about it all the time. Some of us have the technical expertise. Some of us have the big ideas. Some of us are willing to go out there and have the flyers made and put them up and drive up to Muskoka and drive down from Muskoka and do all the things that have to be done to make this happen. But there's an awful lot of us in this family, this MCC Toronto family, whether we meet in the building in Toronto or whether we watch on the web, there's an awful lot of us who don't touch this ministry directly. So what I want to say to you this morning is that we are all in this together. We are all one community supporting each other. That is what we're supposed to do. And the way that you can support this ministry, now of course if you're moved to support it financially, thanks be to God. But what I'm really talking about is a ministry of prayer. You can pray for this and every other ministry of MCC Toronto. You can pray for its leadership. You can pray for wisdom, for guidance. You can even pray for things to change if you don't like the way things are going. But part of being a community is participating. Participating together in a faith community, a community that prays, a community that supports each other. The quote said, Prayer changes people. People change things. Prayer changes people. And people change things. So what this service is about, what this ministry is about, what the multi-site plants are about, is sharing the good news of God's love with the world. So that that good news, that absolutely wonderful feeling, of being loved unconditionally strengthens us and prepares us to go out there and work for justice. Today is a good day. Today is a historic day. Today is the day that God made. And the good news of today is that we meet here together at MCC Toronto on Simpson Ave in Toronto, Ontario. And we watch.
from various locations all over the world. Some when the service is going on, some weeks, months later we watch the service. And some participate in a theater in Bracebridge, Ontario at a brand new multi-site where today a new ministry begins. So to all who can hear my voice, welcome. Welcome home. Amen.